Hello, I hope you're doing fantastic. All right, so you might be wondering, what are these memory addresses? What are they actually doing? What purpose do they serve? Well, let me tell you, these addresses are key for how the processor will know where to look for data when it's running your program. They literally direct the processor where to put data in memory and where to find the data from memory. So let's think about a physical address for a moment. Say I live at 42 Honolulu Boulevard. That's like my address. If you want to find me, you open your phone's mapping application and say, take me to 42 Honolulu Boulevard. Then you hop in your private Learjet and fly over. You grab an Uber to 42 Honolulu Boulevard. And what are you going to find there? Well, you're going to find me. That's my address. Now, I may be out practicing my nunchuck skills or whatever, but nonetheless, my address will point to where I am. So what do these memory addresses have to do with pointers? Well, kind of everything. So let's go back to our pointer definition. A pointer is a variable that holds the memory address of another variable. So a pointer holds the address of another variable. If I had an integer pointer named pscore, which pointed to the score variable, then pscore would be holding the value 104. Likewise, if I have a float pointer named pResult, which pointed to result, then pResult would be holding the value 106. So these pointers hold addresses. If I had an integer pointer bucket, I would put integer addresses in that bucket. If I had a float pointer bucket, I could put float addresses in that bucket. So how do we get these variable addresses? And how do we get a pointer to point at the address? So let's start with the first question. It turns out to get a variable's address is really simple. You just use the ampersand operator in front of a variable name. This is also called the reference operator. It's literally that easy. You just put the little and sign in front of a variable name, and now it's gonna give you the address of that variable in memory. Now, listen, you probably don't believe me. Hey, fair enough. I don't really believe me either. So why don't we put this to a test? What if we make some variables and then print their addresses to the serial monitor window using the ampersand operator in front of the variable name? So here we are in the Arduino IDE. What I'm gonna do is create some variables, then I'm gonna print the memory addresses of those variables using the ampersand operator. And this is gonna prove that I'm not lying to you. So let's do this. All right, so I've created four variables, a byte, a character, an integer, and a float. We've set them equal to different values. So I did this first part, created some variables. Now what I'm gonna do is print the memory addresses of these variables using the ampersand operator. So let me do that. So here I'm printing and LED pin. So this is that ampersand operator. And this is saying, give me the address of LED pin. Now, here's the deal. And this might sound a little weird, but just want to try to explain this as best I can. Serial print is not designed to be able to display an address, a variable address. So we have to cast the address as something else, something that serial print can print, like an integer or a long. And a common way to do this is to cast it as an unsigned long. So I'm going to do that right now just to show you. So what this section of code right here is doing is it's taking the address of LED pin and it's casting it as an unsigned long. And that's simply so that we can print the address out on the serial monitor window. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for these other variables and then we'll see the results on the serial monitor window to determine whether or not I am a cold hard liar.
All right, so let's take a look at the output here. Our byte LED pin is being stored at memory address 2299. We said that a byte takes up one byte of memory. So where would the next variable get stored after 2299? Be it 2298, that's one byte less. You'll notice it's going backwards. And that just happens to be how the memory gets allocated from the top to the bottom in this case. So now our character, it also takes up one byte of memory. So its address is 2298. Well, what about our integer score? What is its address? Well, it's 2296. So it starts at memory location 2296 and it ends at 2297. So it's taking up two bytes, just like we said before. An integer data type on an Arduino Uno takes up two bytes of space. All right, so now what I'll do is print our float, this result. Where do you think the address of result will be? Take a look at this. So first ask yourself, how much space does a float variable take up in our Arduino Uno? How many bytes that is? And what number do you think is gonna end up here? Let me do that and then you can check your answer. Okay, so the address of our float variable result is 2292. It's gotten four bytes in memory. So it starts at 2292, then it goes to 93, 94, and 95, taking up four bytes of memory. All right, see, I wasn't lying after all. Personally, I think this is really fun, and you'll definitely want to try some of the challenges to play around with where these memory addresses end up. If you're really enjoying this uh, Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out our website, programmingelectronics.com. We have a training program that can really help get you up to speed pretty darn quick learning how to program with Arduino. Also, before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, please do like it. If you've got some questions, leave them in the comments. We do read them all and try to do our best to answer them. Thanks a ton. Have a great one. Bye. This lesson is part of a course at Programming Electronics Academy. If you'd like to get access to the full course and all the materials related to this training, check out Programming Electronics Academy, where you can get access to all of these lessons and all of the coursework we offer. I hope you find this extremely helpful.